The Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics, ASUP, has threatened to withdraw their services after 21 days if the federal government fails to address some issues bedeviling the polytechnic education system in Nigeria. Some of their complaints include non-implementation of the Federal Polytechnic Act 2009 amendment and confined victim, confirmed rather victimization of union officers. Joining me to discuss this are still my guest from the previous segment, Olalekon Adigu, political analyst. Thank you very much for joining us. And of course, we have Tamni Kalio, political commentator. Pleasure to have you join us. The pleasure is mine. We seem to have this thing come up over and over and over again. This time, 21 days is the ultimatum. We're just dealing with the labor ultimatum to the federal government on the minimum wage. Now this. What is your reaction? My immediate reaction on uh, the news is, uh, is to show that the education sector in Nigeria is in crisis, serious one. Uh, ASU, have, we have always had a series of ASU strikes for a while. ASU, you know, maybe because uh, polytechnic education has not been really uh, considered much of uh, importance as the uh, university education, so not much of, uh, of ASU news has been in the news. Now, one of the issues that I think that will is increased funding for edu uh, polytechnic education, which has, in fact, polytechnic education was actually carved out because um, uh, carved out to provide technical education as against what uh, the uh, the universities provide. And don't forget, uh, schools like uh, Yabatek was one of the first. Uh, IR institutions in Nigeria, formed by the colonial uh, administration, to provide mid-level uh, technical education uh, in, in the area of engineering, the area of sciences, and, and yeah, the, like the that. chairman of the ASUP actually mentioned that that this se sector is important because they provide the manpower skill that this nation needs, and that sector should not be allowed to die, and that is why they are coming up to say 21 days ultimatum, or we embark on industrial action. That we even have to get to this point where polytechnic lecturers will have to down too for them to get the attention of government is something that we really need to, we really need to examine internally as a people polytechnic education is not just flip side education and if you look at the uh, what's it called the polytechnic act that you mentioned is one of the measures uh, introduced by the uh, buari administration to try to maybe standardize in the qualification for edu uh, polytechnic education with the, uh, in, in addition to the university system. Because how can you explain a situation where somebody, you went for an ND, national diploma, uh, after which you stay for one year IT, you come back for your HND. At the end of HND, you go to NYSE, just like somebody who went to uh, university too. But you still, in, for many situations, if you are going to do your master's, you have to, so in many cases, you have to go through your PGD. And those are some of the issues. Even in the civil service, you don't get promoted be beyond the level if your first degree was in age, even though you later uh, uh, finish with a PhD. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? You, just because you're first, uh, the entry, it shows that you, you, you finish with age and These are some of the serious issues. The Maybe marginalization. The, uh, for well, we will come to some of those issues in a bit, yeah. but I want to draw Tammy's uh, comments now on this development. Well, yeah. This is not the first time, probably not going to be the last time, but. Are you worried about it? Yes, I am actually, because when you look at um, every developed country, you see that the educational sector is always a priority. Any country that determines to grow must invest largely into education. And I'm not trying to segment between the polytechnics and the universities, it's all education. So technically, the entire educational sector in Nigeria is largely starved. If you look at the budgetary allocations to the different sectors of the economy, you see that education is one of the low ones, and I'm still really surprised that that's still happening in 2019. But to be honest, the polytechnics have been like neglected just as much as the universities have, because the way we're talking about it, it's almost as if maybe the universities are doing so well and the, the <laughs> polytechnics are not doing well. No, that's not yeah, the they, case. they have it worse. That's, yeah, I think that's what worse, he was trying to say. But they all have it bad, all the same. <laughs> so we're not, we're not just going to dwell on the polytechnics. Yes, they've given the federal government an ultimatum. And my sadness is that it always comes to this, right? That there are always agreements made and the federal government doesn't seem to implement it fast enough until the polytechnics decide, or the academic staff union of universities decide that, okay, 
we're going to go on a strike. And that now pulls the attention of the federal government and they will sit around the table and say, okay, we will meet your demands and they will still meet it again. So this is Why is that? Why do government always do this over and over again? Well, the trust issue between the people and the government is a serious one. I think it dates back even to the colonial times. Now, the, if you look at the Nigerian state, and when I mean state, I mean the Nigerian government, there's this distrust. Anytime government makes a promise, you know, uh, there's this way, let's just take it uh, on the face value, we are not, because government has repeatedly disappointed. Why? I'm, no, that is, that, I'm, I'm still coming to that. Look at the 2009 uh, ASU uh, federal government uh, uh, agreement. This 2009 agreement started since 2001. <laughs> there, was a two, there was an agreement in two, There was another one in 2013, or 2014 or so. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Now, if you look at it, it should just, you will still come back to, to negotiate what you have already negotiated. And to be fair to government, uh, government always say, oh, it's government. it was not my government. It was Obasanjo that they negotiated with you. Uh, Yaradua came, oh, don't worry, let's come back to the same table. I think during Jonathan too, the, and during Buhari too. So all these kind of things just show the level of distrust between the government and the people. And that's why you see the unions always resort to strike because, this word strike, I think it was, it, it was used during the military for a very, very long time. Well, the military, that is the only word they understand, force. You understand? Force in 1984. There, there, there are those that are saying that this it might be a tactic by government to push it on to the next administration. Because, frankly speaking, this government has spent four years and the conversation has been back, forth, back, forth. And then they are in the second term. The second term is gradually creeping. Is it bulk shifting like people are saying it is? Yes, it is bulk shifting like it has been for all these for years, it. if you look at it. Because to be honest, when you see, I think the major problem with the country, with the government is their processes are just too slow. Now, I understand what it's like to carry out a procurement process with the government. There's so much back and forth movement and too many intermediaries, too many things to check out on, too many check boxes you need to tick. And people, they lack the sufficient motivation to do their jobs on time. So I think this is the major problem that we're having in the country. You get on an agreement with people and you don't implement it fast enough. It now looks like you're not going to implement it at all, which is what he's saying about trust. You don't trust the government enough to know that, okay, these people made a promise to us in so-so time. They are going to do it no matter how long it takes. No one trusts the government enough to do that. So most times it reduces everyone's confidence level. But to me, the real problem is their, their speed. They are, they are too slow in the implementation processes. It's not, it doesn't work the way it works in the private sector. When you want, when you see the private sector wants to do something, they immediately get their books right. They set out and they accomplish it. They set targets. Because they, they have, have something to lose, yes, right? Yes, they do have everything to lose. But this, the, the government, the way it, it's being played out, is like nothing is being lost. Yeah. The education system seems to be falling every day and we keep having, why is it that we don't have um, this sense that our government is committed to revamping the education sector when it comes to agreements like this? Let, let me take that question to you. Well, um, in my opinion, if you look at the budgets, uh, exactly. budget for education, that, that's still less than 10%. That's against the UNESCO standard of 26% for developing economies uh, of your budget should go to. That shows the kind of, you know, uh, what can I call it now? The kind of commitments, the, gov the, the way government take uh, uh, the people, and in this case, Nigeria has a population, a huge population of youth, a huge percentage population of youth. It shows that the government really does, it doesn't really care much about the youth. That's, uh, you know, unlike what it allocates for other uh, uh, sectors. Because if education has had this bad uh, percentage of budget over the years, it shows that even the Nigerian youths are not being taken very, very seriously, if you ask me. Now, in the case of uh, uh, the question you asked, this issue of incessant, uh, going uh, back and forth, as you mentioned, is, yes, it's, a buro it's bureaucracy. Government has something to lose. Government does not have anything to lose. It's not that they know that they don't. Um, for example, look how many uh, uh, major uh, people, uh, when I say major people now, people, uh, big politicians have their children in these polytechnics to even start with. 
So they will have to be slow over some of these things. They will deliberately, if they want to get it done, yes, bureaucracy is there, but if they really want to get this job done, they will do it. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? But it just shows that government is not totally committed to education. Is it possible that what you said earlier about um, APSOP not being treated as equal to um, the universities as per the degree and the certificates that comes out at the end of the day, is it possible that is one of the reasons we keep having them come up to say the federal government is not doing what they've promised us? Yes, I think it's possible. Um, that could be one of the reasons, but I don't think it's the only reason. Like I said earlier, this um, recurrence, reoccurrence that you have of the university bodies and the polytechnic bodies coming back to strike against the federal government because of lack of agreements that they've not come to, it occurs all the time and it also happens with the universities. It's not just um, the polytechnic, but yes, of course, that's one of the reasons. If you're neglecting the universities that have been long established and have like churned out a number of prom um, prominent Nigerians, what do you think is going to happen to the, the polytechnics? That's the problem. But I think that this, the main issues we're focusing on, or the main issues that we have is priority. Like you said, you look at the budget and you see that it's under 10%. That is a problem. It shows that the government's priority is not in education. It shows like you have a population of over 50, about 50 or 50, 50 point something percent of the entire population are young people who are under the age of 30. And like they are 30 years and below, and then you're not prioritizing education above other things. It's like having a company without a research and development unit being like, like prioritized. It means you're not looking to grow. It means you're not looking to keep up with international best practices or standards. So I think this is the issue that people are having. This is where the lack of trust is coming from. Maybe a lot of Nigerians may not be able to look at um, the budget and understand it, but the universities can. The, the polytechnics can. These are educated people. They look at it, they see that uh, every year the budget is small. So you don't have enough trust in the government that, okay, this small money that is allocated to the government includes part of our deals that have been struck that, okay, yes, some benefits will be paid and all of that. So that's the problem that they're having. The government doesn't prioritize education because at the moment they seem to be looking at other things. They're looking at capital expenditure, roads, infrastructure. Meanwhile, people who actually consider, or governments that consider the future, that think about the development of their nation, which is still under a development status, would prioritize education. They would put almost 40% of their budget into education because they're thinking about ways to improve the economy, ways to solve crisis, ways to solve problems, ways to better healthcare, deliver education and everything. So they're not investing into human capital. That's in the, the past, we've had students come up to you know, help push arguments like this using various uh, channels. What role is our Nigerian students? Are, are they playing enough role in, in pushing the government to do the needful when it comes to education? If you can say that in a minute, that would be great. That was when uh, uh, the National Association of Nigerian Students and later the National Association of Nigerian, uh, uh, National Association of Nigerian Students and the Polytechnic uh, uh, counterparts have really they've really done well in the past. But in recent times, uh, they've been they've been got, they've gotten involved into politics and too many things that have led to factionalization of the student movements by the political class and things like that. So the uh, bodies have really gone into insignificance. What they just have is most likely begging bowls from from the hands of politicians. Your final thoughts on this? My thoughts are this, right? Um, every nation that wishes to grow should invest into education. I really feel that the government should prioritize education. It, it's, it's an emergency point of the government. It's like a bleeding point. A lot of countries are developing. They're making lots of plans for what's going to happen in the future. If you look at what Canada is doing right now, the immigration laws that allow for foreigners to come into their country provides a certain standard of people to come in. You understand? You have to be educated to a certain level. You have to pass those requisite exams for you to qualify to be a permanent resident. That is actually investing into like 150 years down the line because along the line you're having naturalized people that are going to get married amongst themselves and have smart children who will still in turn throw back their intelligence into, into the country's country. development. So what the country ought to do with as regards this is address these issues. Try and make sure it doesn't come up again. If there are debts to be paid, if there are agreements that were reached, fulfill those agreements on your own part so we don't have recurring strikes because it's the students that actually suffer. And in turn, those students are the country, they're the future. 
So that's, these are my thoughts. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming on the program. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. We'll go on a short break now for a plus package, and when we return, I'll give my take. Do stay with us. The Nigerian Senate has begun to debate on the 2020 budget as presented by President Mohamed Buhari. Lawmakers have taken turns to express their opinions and with givings on the 10.3 trillion budget estimate expected to impact the lives of Nigerians and return the nation's budget implementation window back to January to December timeline. Lawmakers have taxed the executive on implementation, debt reduction, power and taxation among several issues. We must begin to think how do we diversify the venue base of our society. When you talk about 257, 256 billion being allocated to works, I have it on good authority that what is even required to take care of outstanding in the Ministry of Works and Housing is in excess of 500 billion naira. And here we have allocated 256 billion, I will be said to be huge, comparative to what has been allocated to other sectors. I think the plan to increase VAT to 7.5% is clearly an instance of regressive taxation. If you look at item C, introducing tax incentives for investments in infrastructure and capital markets, this situation for me of increasing VAT is a shortcut to economic recovery. It smacks of intellectual laziness and like all shortcuts, <laughs> like all shortcuts, I don't think it will drive this country in the right and proper direction. I have some misgivings about the fundings of the budget of 2020. With a debt portfolio of 20 trillion, debt, um, debt service of 2.4 trillion, higher than our capital budget of 1.18 billion. I wo I, it means that we are not going to find funds to um, implement our capital budget. I would like to reflect on the 2019 budget, where a po only a paltry sum of 294.6 billion has been released for capital projects as at September 2019. As at June in 2019, our budget was already in, uh, um, budget expenditure, expenditure for 2019 was already in deficit of 1.35 trillion. This Deficit is what is de delaying implementation of the capital budget. So, given the same indices that we are using in 2019 to raise revenue in 2020, it is really worrisome if we can meet our revenue targets. Economic argument and debate is a political decision. The political will to implement the budget and, of course, budget making has to demonstrate fairness equity and inclusivity. For example, Mr. President, my constituents are deeply concerned about the poor showing of Plateau State in the budget over the years, and even in this one. This has been repeated in this year's budget, and it's the desire and call of my constituents that the Senate will address these imbalance and to make provision for the Akwanga Joss Bauchi Road and equally to facilitate the completion of the Joss Yakub Gohan Airport Hepang. I'm coming from the southeast of, the, uh, southeast of this country. I know we have so many abandoned projects uh, in our area. One is uh, the second Niger Bridge. It's very, very important to us because we are businessmen who are also moving up and down. The other issue is uh, the Nine Mile Makodi Expressway. Is, uh, is that is very, very important to us because that's the gateway to the north and that, I communicate, that, uh, uh, that we, we take to get to uh, Abuja and beyond. The other issue is uh, the, the Akanu Ibiam International Airport. We have for over 40, 40, for, for, uh, 43 days now. This, uh, that airport has been closed. Mr. President, we are begging that uh, in this uh, year's budget, 
the, now that the, that place has closed. And that's the only major airport in the southeast that the federal government should allocate money, since we are not uh, doing new projects, ensure that that airport is done for us. Education in this country deserves more. Teachers at all levels should be treated better. Federal government should do their utmost to adjust the balance and enhance the quality of education young people receive in this country. Too much has already been said with so little done. We should just stop talking already and just do the needful. We can. I know we can. And that's our program tonight. Thanks for watching and have a lovely weekend. Thank you.